Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Chicago Deep Dish Pizza Muffins. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to make a Chicago Deep Dish Pizza that you actually can eat by holding it in your hand. You know, like real pizza. Which is why to my friends in Chicago, I will say you're welcome. You can finally put down that fork and knife or use it for one of your hot dogs. And yes, it is ironic this is being shared by someone from New York, but this is such a great idea it had to be done. And to get started, let me show you what you're gonna need. Besides some of our Chicago style pizza dough, which of course we have a video for, we will definitely need some cooked crumbled Italian sausage, as well as some diced sweet peppers, which I did give a brief saute to. And then as far as our cheese, I'm gonna go with some provolone, which for this technique I prefer to dice up instead of shred. And then we'll also go with some mozzarella. And for that, grating it is fine. And then we'll also be finishing our pizza muffins with Parmesan. But Parmigiano Reggiano is a prima donna and does not show up for dress rehearsals. And then we'll also of course need some of your favorite pizza sauce, whether that's our recipe or not. And before we get started, we're gonna to wanna to very generously oil a standard muffin tin. And that's it, once our pan is prepped and our ingredients are ready, we will take some Chicago style pizza dough that you will make using our critically acclaimed recipe. And for best results, we want this dough to be cold. And while we normally wanna use pizza dough that's room temp before we make pizza, for this technique, the cold dough works better since that's gonna prevent it from rising too soon and also make it easier to work with. And what we'll do is roll that out using just enough flour so it doesn't stick to a thickness of about an eighth of an inch. And then one big tip here, once we have our dough rolled out, we'll wanna go around and loosen the edge and then we'll pick it up so we're sure it's not stuck to the table. And the reason for that is if it's stuck to the table, that's gonna keep the dough from contracting. And then what will happen when we cut out our circles and pick them up, they will basically shrink and they might be too small to use. So by loosening the dough first before we cut it, they are pretty much gonna stay four inch circles. Speaking of which, my largest round cutter is slightly smaller than four inches. So I'm actually using the bottom of the tin it came in, which is exactly four inches. And to make one muffin tin of these, we're gonna to need to cut out 12 pieces, which I clearly did not have enough dough to do here. But the good news is we can wad up that dough and just simply cut some more, which is exactly what I did. And then what we'll do is take each circle of dough and we'll place that into each muffin cup and we'll make sure that's centered and nice and flat on the bottom, at which point we'll press it and push it up the sides as best we can. And while we want to get close, we do not need to go all the way to the top, right? This dough obviously expands when it cooks and you'll see by the time these are done, our dough will have come up all the way to the top and maybe even a little higher. And no, in case you're wondering, I don't feel the need to go in any particular order, which I'm sure definitely bothers some people. All right, you know who you are. And then speaking of contracting dough, like we mentioned earlier, since we are kind of pulling and pushing and stretching this dough up the sides, as the finished ones sit, they will shrink up a little bit. So once we finish the last one, I like to go around one more time, just giving that dough one more push up the sides. And of course, since you're not a robot, and I'm not a robot, allegedly, these are not gonna be all perfectly uniform, but that's okay. As you'll see, once these are filled and baked, they look amazing. And that's it, once our pan has been doughed, we will start filling these in a very precise order. All right, the first thing that goes in is about a tablespoon of our diced provolone. Oh, and the reason I like to dice it is that it's gonna allow for some nooks and crannies into which our sausage and peppers can kind of settle down into. And then once our provolone is set, we'll go ahead and top that with a tablespoon of our cooked crumbled sausage, and then a couple teaspoons of our pepper mixture over that. And obviously, any of your favorite pizza ingredients will work in this. I mean, you are after all the Michael Jordan of what these should be sporting. But since the first deep dish pizza I ever had in Chicago was a sausage and pepper, that's what I'm going with here. And it's definitely my favorite version. And as I top these with the peppers, I'm sure some of you are getting nervous since it looks like we're almost all the way to the top, but please relax, it's gonna be fine. Right, these ingredients really settle down once they cook. So even if we're like a half inch to an inch above the top of the pan, it is gonna work out beautifully. But to hedge our bets, let's go ahead and give our fillings a light pressing down before we move on to the final cheese and sauce. And that's it, we'll go ahead and top these with a good rounded tablespoon of mozzarella. And by the way, do not use the nice stuff. And by nice, I mean that fresh, wet stuff, which is incredible in a tomato salad, but it's gonna to be too moist for this. And then what we'll do once our mozzarella has been added is go ahead and spoon over a couple tablespoons of our pizza sauce. And I was just about to say, try not to get any on the dough, 
but I won't, since I just got it on the dough, so I'm not sure you're going to take me seriously. And also, I like to push the first tablespoon down a little bit with the tip of the spoon, basically giving it the old polka polka, just to sort of push it down a little. And then we'll go ahead and put a second spoon over the top. And like I said, it is fine we're going slightly above the level of the pan. In fact, we really do want to, for maximum visual appeal when these are done. And then for our final step, we will top these with a very generous grating of real Parmesan cheese. All right, some Parmigiano Reggiano, except no substitutes. And it's okay if a little bit goes on the pan, since there's no way to do this without that happening. So it's okay. And that's it, once that's been very generously grated over, we can go ahead and wipe off a little bit of that excess on the edge of our pan, at which point this is ready to transfer into the center, or upper center, of a 400 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes, or until the tops are beautifully browned and they look like this. We should have what looks like 12 perfect, miniaturized, Chicago-style deep dish pizzas. And as you can see, even though our dough didn't come all the way up to the top of the pan, as it baked and expanded, it rose up to the perfect level to produce what I think is a really nice appearance. And then what we'll do is let these cool for about 10 to 15 minutes before we go around the edge with a knife, just in case any of that cheese is stuck. But even if it is, it should separate very easily. And then once that's loose, we can grab a fork or a freakishly small spatula, which I don't have, and we can lift that out. And that's it. A perfect mini deep dish pizza with a beautiful golden crust that's cooked all the way through. And we'll go ahead and transfer those onto a rack to let them cool a little bit more. All right, you can eat these hot, but for me, the ideal service temperature is warm, but they're also incredible at room temp. And if you've been drinking, really good cold. And while those cool, if we want, we can go ahead and sprinkle on a little freshly chopped Italian parsley, which as you might know in the Midwest, counts as a portion of green vegetables. And then even though these are still a little too hot to eat, I'm going to go for it anyway, because they just look and smell so delicious. And that, my friends, tastes and feels exactly like a deep dish pizza, except I think better. Because here it's easier to control the perfect ratio between that buttery cornmeal infused crust and our meaty, cheesy, saucy filling. And even though a little sauce and cheese might char around the edges of some of these, or all of these, that is not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. And if you're a fan of the Detroit style pizza, you understand why, right? That part is just super extra savory. But anyway, I really did enjoy everything about that. And then I went ahead and plated some up so I could take some contractually obligated pictures and then decide to film myself eating one more. And I'm not sure exactly what it is about Chicago style deep dish pizza, but for whatever reason, sausage and peppers really do work amazingly well. I don't know if it's that little bit of cornmeal in the crust, but for me, that is by far the best combination of ingredients, with ham and pineapple being a close second. All right, I'm just kidding. Oh, and if you're wondering, is there a way we can use this technique for a New York-style thin crust pizza? No, there isn't, but we don't need one. Since individually sized New York-style pizza is already a thing, and in the pizza business, we call that a slice. And if you're thinking about making these for a party, you can make these ahead, and then just put them on a sheet pan and pop them in a hot oven until they're heated through, and they're going to be great. But whether you reheat these or eat them right away, or you use different fillings or make them as shown, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.